the Space Force is collaborating with SpaceX on a series of missions as it aims to establish itself as one of the strongest branches of the United States Armed Forces. In this video, we'll explain the details of these missions and the impact they would have on both Space Force and SpaceX. Grab your favorite snack and get ready to be thrilled as we explore this unprecedented partnership between two dominating forces in space. In December 2019, President Donald Trump did something that shocked many Americans. Today also marks another landmark achievement as we officially inaugurate the newest branch of our military. It's called the Space Force. Since that day, the Space Force has been eager to exert its dominance as one of the strongest arms of the U.S. military and the undisputed king of the world beyond. And as part of this quest, the Space Force has assigned 21 national security launch missions to SpaceX, the world's most successful private space company. But before we delve into the nitty-gritty of this partnership and the benefits it would have for Space Force, SpaceX, and the United States as a whole, let's talk about why the Space Force exists. Basically, the Space Force is a U.S. military branch set up to protect the interests of the United States and its allies in space. It became imperative for the United States to create a Space Force after subtle threats from independent state actors that suggest they might be looking to attack the U.S. through space. For instance, about two decades ago, Wang Hu Chung, a Chinese military analyst, stated in a research paper that space would be an irresistible and tempting choice for countries who cannot win a war against the United States using tanks and planes. So despite the initial pushback in some quarters, it made sense that the United States actually moved swiftly to bolster its security in orbit by creating a space force. A few years down the line, following official announcements that the agency has assigned 21 national security missions to two private space companies, including SpaceX. But what exactly are these missions about, and why is Space Force awarding them to SpaceX? Well, let's find out together. In a groundbreaking announcement made on the 31st of October 2023, the Space Systems Command confirmed that it had assigned a total of 21 missions to the United Launch Alliance (ULA) and SpaceX as part of the National Security Space Launch Phase 2 contracts awarded back in 2020. The ULA, on its part, is expected to handle 11 of these missions. This includes the GPS-39, NROL-73, NROL-56, and the STP-5 mission, among others. Meanwhile, SpaceX will be responsible for 10 missions, including the SDA, T-1TLF, and the USSF-57. You're probably wondering what all the individual goals of these missions will be. Well, there's no need to jump the gun, because I'll be telling you everything you need to know about each mission in a jiffy. Basically, the NROL missions are designed to serve the National Reconnaissance Office. The SDA missions will be used to send batches of small satellites to low Earth orbit constellation. These satellites facilitate the creation of a transport layer of data communication, as well as a tracking layer of missile detection sensors, which could be used to detect missiles targeted at the US or its allies in the future. Similarly, the USSF-57 is expected to launch the first of three ultra-expensive next-generation overhead persistent infrared geostationary, which is also designed for missile warning. Of course, you also have the Silent Barker 2, NROL-118, which is a joint mission for the NRO and Space Force. It is specifically designed to provide domain awareness for DOD and the intelligence community. Next up is the STP-5, which is basically the fifth phase of the organization's space test program. As part of this particular mission, the Space Force will launch two satellites solely for the purpose of supporting the Department of Defense Strategic Capabilities Office. Lastly, there's the USSF-25, which will launch DARPA's Demonstration for Agile Cislunar Operations Nuclear Thermal Spacecraft, and the USS-95, which will be the first ever launch of a missile tracking prototype satellite in medium Earth orbit. Altogether, these missions cost a total of $2.5 billion, with ULA earning $1.3 billion and SpaceX earning $1.23 billion. The missions assigned to the ULA will be launched with the soon-to-debut Vulcan rocket. In contrast, SpaceX's reliable workhorse, Falcon 9, will be used to launch nine missions, while three of its missions will be launched with the Falcon Heavy rocket. We don't know yet when the first series of missions will be launched, but officials believe that all 21 missions will be launched within the next two to three years. And by the time the last mission is completed, 
the U.S. Space Force would have launched 48 missions, 14 more than it had originally planned to. Initially, the ULA, which is an alliance between Boeing and Lockheed Martins, was expected to handle 60% of the missions, while SpaceX launched the remaining 40%. However, the sharing formula was very much different at the end, with ULA taking 26 missions, which is the equivalent of 54% of the bulk, while SpaceX was awarded 22 missions, which translates to 46% share. Top government officials confirm that SpaceX was awarded more missions than initially expected based on the government assignment of readiness. In other words, the government, or at least some of its officials, seem to believe that SpaceX is currently more prepared to undertake these missions than ULA, and you can understand why. The Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, which SpaceX plans to use for the launch, have been officially certified to fly national security launches, and so far, both space vehicles have had an impeccable safety record. However, the ULA's Vulcan rocket hasn't even made it into orbit yet, and obviously, it hasn't been certified either. Speaking about the changes made to the contract, Doug Pentecost confirmed that if the initial agreement were maintained, ULA would have gotten only 13 missions, while SpaceX would have gotten just 8. However, after deep consideration, they decided to expand the contract and award both companies more missions. The government considered multiple factors in the mission assignment analysis process, including the launch system maturity assessment process, production capability and capacity, and the ability to meet the order year launch demand, Doug Pentecost said. The impact of these missions is quite enormous. For one, government contracts like these are a great source of income for private space companies, which ultimately helps to keep them afloat and support their expansion plans. In 2022, SpaceX earned $2.2 billion from government contracts, representing about 60% of its total $4.6 billion revenue for that year. This gives you a fair idea of how important government contracts are to private space companies. For the Space Force, the benefits of these missions are almost immeasurable. Through this mission, the Force will assemble an advanced network of infrastructure in space that will serve for many years and perhaps even decades. In addition, these missions improve the capability of the Space Force to fulfill its primary obligation, which is to defend the interest of the United States and its allies in space. More importantly, they will help you deter adversaries who may be thinking of attacking the U.S. through space. While ULA and SpaceX are working around the clock to ensure the Phase 2 assignments are completed, officials of the Space Force are already looking to ramp up the NSSL program, with a number of assignments listed out for Phase 3. This phase will involve 90 launches and offer lots of benefits for the private space companies that will be involved, the Space Force, and the United States as a whole.